happy Wednesday, everybody. How's it going? Hello, hello. I'm just going to give it just a minute to refresh here and we will get started. <clears throat> super excited, super, super excited about today's topic. Um, because it's money. <laughs> It looks like we're live. I'm just going to give it a minute to refresh here <clears throat> so that I can see everybody's faces. Awesome. Hello, Lori Smith. Good to see you. Hi, Allison. Yay. Gang's all here, at least some of you. Um, if you're live and you haven't said hello, please say hello so that I can say hi back. And um, hi, Renee. And uh, let me know as we go today what questions that you have. Um, I am starting to build in more and more cushion to these, these conversations that we're having every Wednesday. Um, if you're new to me, hi, I'm Laura. I'm an intuitive business coach. Um, and I help people blend both the mindset, spiritual, intuitive, um, ways of running a business with the practical and the strategic ways of running a business because they're all super, super important. Um, and hi, Alice, two times in one day. I love it. And um, what I do on these lives is I share one topic per week. Um, if you haven't caught me live, you don't have to. You can also catch the replay. It's always here for you in the Facebook group. And um, Today we're talking about money. Um, so I want to quickly, before you think you know what today's call is about, or today, I always call it a call, what today's topic is about, <clears throat> I want to tell you what it's not. Um, this is three ways, three smart actions that you can take right now in your business to create more profit, more profit, right? So this isn't about bringing in income, right? Which actually some of the stuff that we're going to talk about is going to help you bring in income, but this isn't about how to get more clients, about how to go to market, about how to strategically market your stuff. This isn't really about that. And it's not about like, oh, let me just look at my expenses and decrease them. Neither one. It's not about bringing in more money. It's not about decreasing your expenses. It's about what are you doing with what's coming in and what are you doing more importantly with what's behind the scenes and how you're running your business so that you can do it more profitably? Of course, if you have more clients coming in, theoretically, you have more profit. And of course, if you decrease your expenses, theoretically, you have more profit. But I think the decreasing expenses thing is sort of a slippery slope because then we deny ourselves things and that's not living in the space of scarcity and not abundance. And expenses are really important. We need a roof over our head. We need to hire a team. We need to have, you know, a Zoom account and, and such things. So, um, so I think it's important that like, that's not neither one of that just to set out from the beginning, neither one of those are part of today's conversation. Of course, you can look at those two things because, you know, income minus expenses equals profit, right? So, and by the way, it's not lost on me that this is April 15th tax week. It, this was not planned at all. It didn't occur to me. I didn't purposely plan it this week. It just, I guess my mind uh, remembered, my body remembered. Um, so, but what we are gonna talk about is like, what's going on behind your business, behind the scenes in your business, right? Um, how to run your business more efficiently and more effectively so that the money that comes in is utilized in the best way possible, which then brings you more profit. I hope that makes sense. If that alone doesn't make sense, please ask me a question or let me know specifically where you are confused because I just wanna make sure that we're level setting today before we even really get started. So the first thing I wanna talk about when it comes to creating more profit in your business is something that I think, actually, I think two, so three things today that we're going to talk about. I think two of these things are a little bit counterintuitive or may be seen as counterintuitive, um, but they're really, really not. And I think they are in many cases, the two most important pieces of wisdom that I can share with you about running a business. Um, like if I, I used this example the other day. Um, 
you know, when I was talking about, I did a live on um, marketing and advertising. And I think I asked like, if you got hit by bus tomorrow, or if you had one more hour to live and you had to spend part of it, like giving messages to your audience, what would it be? And honestly, like these two things are one of my most important pieces of my message anywhere ever. So you may or may not have heard me say elements of this, but I'm going to speak to it today in relation to profit. I just gave you a whole lot of preface. Um, so the first one, how can you create more profit in your business? Are you ready? Don't get mad at me. Don't shoot me. Don't turn it off. Invest in your business. Invest the money that's coming in back into your business. Okay, it's not rocket science, right? And I, I don't really love the phrase, it takes money to make money or you have to spend money to make money. I don't really love that because it's just got a weird energy to it. Um, and it's sort of, thank you for the hearts. <laughs> and I know this is sort of like popular slash unpopular, but um, I don't like, so I, I do feel like I wanna preface it by like, I don't really buy into that philosophy exactly because it's just sort of like a grueling, um, this is the way the world is and it's hard. Like, and I just don't buy into that. I think we get to create our own reality. Okay, with your business, with your life, with your anything. Um, but when we take some of the money that's coming in, and this is assuming by the way, guys, that like the money that's coming in, that you're paying yourself first, that you're giving yourself the ability to cover your expense. This is, we're assuming that this is covered, right? That you know how you're going to buy food for the month and, um, pay your rent. If you don't have that, then, then this this to this number one piece of the conversation is sort of your next step, right? But you want to make sure that you're, when you talk about Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? Like you want to make sure that you have the basic bare need, basic needs met. And if you don't go to my conversation about having a side gig, go to, you know, adding, taking your advertising and your marketing up a notch, right? Um, do what you need to do to bring in the money that you need to have to survive and eat and pay for rent so that you can now just focus on running a business. Um, so when you invest in your business, I'm going to give you two easy ways to invest in your business. There are many, 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 many others. And it may even be investing in another income source or income stream, right? Investing is always a good idea. Yes, investing means by the nature of it, that you're putting money out for the purpose and the expectation of receiving even more of that back, but it's not always instant, right? But investing works, right? Play the stock market, it, you know what you're doing. But um, when you invest in something, it works as long as you make a smart investment, right? And just like anything, um, one of the things that I talk about all the time is like making smart business decisions. So this is assuming that you're making smart business decisions, right? This isn't just throw spaghetti. Oh, Laura said to go invest, so I gotta go throw all my money away. This is, this is my caveat. That is not what I'm saying. Two things, um, and this is from my own experience of running a business for three and a half years. It's also from my experience of working with clients because in that three and a half years, I've worked, um, well, in the last three years, I've worked exclusively with entrepreneurs and creatives, um, but I worked mostly with entrepreneurs and creatives in that first six to 12 months as well. Here's what I see. And I also study the crap out of business coaches and online people who are running online businesses and people who are talking about online marketing. Like I have also studied this and this is, this is not really my idea, but this is what I know to be true based on my experience, my client's experience and everything else that I've sort of absorbed and consumed over the years. Two ways to invest that will, I guarantee you, help you bring in more profit. I promise, I promise not at the very first moment when you start to pay this, but it will bring in more profit. Number one, delegate, 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 delegate. I did a whole series on, should you hire an expert or should you DIY something? There is always, I don't care where you are in your business at the very beginning, or if you've been in business for a long time, there's most likely something that you're doing that you could delegate to and hire someone to do. And this doesn't mean you need to create, you know, a full-time job for it, 
everybody I know has people that work with them on their team that are freelancers that are worked by, working by the hour, by the project, et cetera. Um, bringing on support to do the work that either you're really not good at, you hate to do, takes up your time, uh, that you're, maybe you're good at. I gave the example a, lot, a couple of weeks ago about like, I can do Canva and I can do my own graphics. But when I brought Amy on, who by the way is my VA, but she's also more of like my creative, I started calling her my creative director because she does all of my branding and graphics and <clears throat> all the creative visual stuff that you see on my website, on my socials, et cetera. When I brought Amy on, one of the things that was so obvious and one of my biggest pain points was I could do Canva and it was fine. Like I didn't do some crappy stuff. Like it was pretty decent stuff. I'm not, I'm not saying that it was, but it took me so much time to put something out that looked decent. And Amy came in and not only did she knock it out in like a quarter of the time that it took me to do my socials, she did it 10 times better. So for me to pay her by the hour to do something like that, yes, it's totally worth that investment because that has freed my schedule up. The first thing I did, I brought her in in December. And the first thing I did in January is I opened up my calendar to receive more one-on-one -on -one clients. And I did. Now it's not always that instantly quick, right? I brought her in at the beginning of December and that profit had flipped and was already clear and obvious to me by the end of January. And January at the time was my biggest sales month ever, 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 ever in the history of my business. It's not just because I brought her on, there's a whole lot of stuff there, but that was the final step for me to being, being able to up-level my business financially to the next level because I did not have this, the time to open up time on my calendar. Um, so hiring an expert, delegating your work, however you wanna call that, your time is money. Your time is money, especially when you're running your own business and you're doing all the things. And that's not to say that you need to now go out and hire 90 million people to help you run your business. One person at a time is amazing. A few hours a month is honestly a whole impact, a huge amount of impact. Um, but when you invest, so this is back to those of you who are just joining me, I'm talking about the ways that you can create more profit in your business. There's three ways we're gonna talk about today. Number one is delegate. I mean, one, number one is investing. Two ways that you can invest, one is delegating. So when you hire somebody, you fold time. When you hire somebody who is better at something than you are, that is their expertise and they can do it faster. You then open up your time to focus on the two things that you really, really, really need to be doing and the two things that only you can do, which is serve your clients or create your product and market. Yes, you can help somebody help you with, mar have somebody help you to, with marketing, but you're still the face of that, right? So you're still theoretically having, if you're a service-based um, entrepreneur, you're having discovery calls. That's still marketing. If you're, um, you might be doing networking meetings and, and groups and opportunities, you're still the face of the business. Um, if you have a, a, a product-based business, you know, you're probably out doing some sort of event for lack of a better word to get yourself out there, right? Like everybody's got something, whether you're selling something at a, at a show or a trade show, one of my clients runs a bakery and she's always at the farmer's market, right? Like she needs to be the face of that business. That's marketing. Only she can do that, right? Other people can sell her stuff at the farmer's market, but she needs to be the face, right? So it's like thinking about what can you, what needs to be done by you and what can be, and at some point should be delegated. And again, this is just one step at a time. You can start small, and have a huge impact. So number one, invest. And the number one of number one is delegate or hire somebody to help you. Time is money. Your time is money. And I also like to recommend to people like our hourly rate is sort of subjective because no matter what it is that you do, there are other things that you do, right? So I could say, this is my hourly rate because this is how much I charge per hour for a session with a client. But the truth is I offer support with my clients daily, sometimes support for my clients in between sessions, right? 
how much time am I spending on that? So like, then you've got to, then my hourly rate just went down, right? Um, I, I create and work on documents for them to help them. Like if you're writing a post and you need some help, then they send me that and I review it and make comments or edit it, right? Where does that come in, right? So, so you, everybody's hourly rate is subjective, but make one up that seems appropriate. That's not just your client facing hours or, you know, Courtney who makes jewelry, like it's not just your jewelry making hours in the studio. Like how much time are you spending ordering the materials, right? How much time are you spending creating and like journaling? Do you, do you like draw it out Courtney and then you make it or do you make it, you know, all of that time that you spend is time towards creating your product, service, gift, whatever you put out into the world. So make up an hourly rate and then decide how much of my time am I going to save if I bring somebody on to just do my graphics or to be a VA or to do my bookkeeping? How much time am I going to save? And then you can easily equate that to money. Bam, right? If you can, if you can make one additional discovery call a month or one additional networking meeting a month or one additional event or one additional place where you put the face of yourself out there, or you can then post more on social media because you have the space and the support, I guarantee you that's going to come back to you. Usually fairly quickly, but always it comes back at whatever space and time it is. Um, hi, G. Oh my gosh. I'm happy to see you, my dear. Okay. Um, I see a comment here and then I am going to come back to number two. Lori says, totally get the unpopular thing. Yeah, because I said, I know when I tell you to invest in your business, you're going to be like, oh, um, there's a part. <laughs> I love this. This Lori Smith, you speak for everybody. There's a part of me that wants to growl at you. And there's a part of me that knows you're right. Yeah. And this is why I'm now speaking to the part of you that wants to growl at me, right? Like the, okay, how much of your time is being expended and how much of your money therefore is being expended by doing the things that you don't have to do. Like, and again, I do believe in starting small. I really believe in starting small, it, especially because you can get some traction with something like this, hiring a VA, hiring somebody to do your socials, hiring somebody to do your bookkeeping, whatever it is that is like the, ugh, part of your business for you, start with that. Um, start with that and you will see, you know, right? So then here's the practical side of it. If your time is money and you can then see how much you're investing on the other end, that, that your investment comes back financially, you're gonna see pretty quickly. I'm sorry, if your time is money and you know how much your hourly rate is and you know how long it takes you to do this thing that you're thinking of delegating, and then you can decide what you're going to do to fill that time instead with something that's money-making, right? Either opening up a space on your calendar for a client you know, a discovery call, a networking event, whatever it is, more socials, whatever it is. And there's one like practical justification. I'm just giving that part of you that doesn't want to do it the hard evidence. Okay. Um, the other hard evidence that I think a lot of people miss because I'm going to talk about energy and I'm going to go a little wooey for a second, but there is a practical component to this. Um, Two ways to look at your energy around this. When you have something that you are delegating out, let's use me as an example, because like I said, I was doing my own graphics, okay? There was nothing wrong with them. They weren't shitty. They could have been better, but they were fine. But I was maxed out with my time. I was really busy, okay? So... <clears throat> We talked about the time piece, but there's also a piece in there about even if it takes me a while, the energy with which I had to put into that task, because I am not, <laughs> I had a conversation with Alice today about how I am not an artist. I'm very creative. I am not a like artist. That's not my skill. Um, and yet I was doing something artistic. Um, I'm really good at like knowing what looks good, but I'm not so good at creating the what looks good. I can do it again. I can do it. Um, but the amount of energy that I had to expend and brain power that I had to expend to put that decent Canva graphic together wasn't just costing my time, which equals money. It was costing my energy, which equals money. 
because I don't like to say this very often because I think it gets taken to people right to run away with this comment, but there is only so much, so many hours in a day and there's only so much energy that you have per day to expend upon your business. I would rather put that energy into a client meeting. Financially and fulfillment wise, I would much rather put that energy that I was using towards my Canva graphics into serving a client or going out and finding a new client or what, whatever it is, right? Financially, that makes sense. And um, fulfillment wise, that makes sense. I'm enjoying myself more, which is the third piece I want to suggestion I want to make around this, which is when you have a piece of your business that is energetically draining you, if you hate marketing, for example, I always like to say, like, you can't really run away from it. You can't just delegate all of it out. You still have to know who you are, who you serve, what your points are, what your key messages are, why you, you know, why you're different, what's your special sauce, what results you get your clients, blah, 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 blah. But if you, let's just use copywriting, for example, if you're not a good writer and that's just not one of your biggest talents, how would it feel to offload even a portion? Let's just say 25% of the time that you spend doing copywriting every month. What if you could take 25% of that and hire somebody to help you? If that is energetically draining to you, it is affecting your business from a time standpoint, therefore from a money standpoint, from an energy standpoint, as far as like the amount of energy you're expending to write the copy. And then you go to the spiritual way of looking at energy and like your energy field. And when you're, tapped into the part of your business that's heavy and weighing you down, it's a lot harder to reflect what you actually do to the world in a clean way that then is magnetic to new clients or new customers to buy your products. So there's time, there's money, not money coming in money, but money that you could be making or actions that you could be taking that would create more money. Then there's energy as far as your focus and the amount of energy it takes per day to do the thing. And then there's like the energetic vibe that you put out when something's weighing you down. Okay, I'm gonna pause for questions because I'm still on number one, part one. <laughs> but I have a lot to say. Okay, I'm not seeing any more comments. So I'm just gonna hang on and see if you guys have any. Questions, comments, reactions to this. I'm really, really, really big on investing in your business. Okay, I'm gonna stay with it. Hi, Donna. So again, um, the first thing you can do to create more profit in your business is you can invest back into that business. One way to invest is to delegate or hire an expert to do the thing that does not have to be done by you or to do the thing that takes up too much of your time or to do the thing that you just don't like that weighs you down. So then you're freeing up time, you're freeing up your opportunity to make, to do money-making activities. You're freeing up your energy so that you can focus more on what you do best instead of trying to take your genius and go, hold on a minute, I'm gonna do, go do this thing that I'm not that great at. <laughs> um, and then you clean up the energy around your business, which then makes you more magnetically attractive. Okay, number two, hire a coach. Hire a coach, hire a coach, hire a coach. I don't care if it's me, hire a coach. Um, what hiring a coach does in addition to hiring any sort of expert but hiring a business coach in particular, they help you fold time. You get to your financial results faster. Yes, it's an investment because you have to pay them, but you will get faster to your goals. And it's not just about being faster, but it's one of the things, I don't really have any regrets about the way that I went about starting my business um, because it's all been ridiculously helpful as far as a learning experience. And um, 
I do believe, and I say this all the time, entrepreneurship is a journey. If you're looking for some like magic bullet or like quick get rich scheme, like this is not it. <laughs> it might be one month and then it might not be the next um, because this is a personal growth journey in addition to a business growth journey. And they go hand in hand. When you are somebody who is in this space, who is a conscious entrepreneur, who is a conscious or spiritual creative, when you are doing work that is deeply personal, your gifts and talents coming out into the world. It's different than I'm going to just create a business just to make money and sell widgets and find the best way to sell those widgets. That's great. Those people aren't really in this group. Those people aren't the people that I serve. When you are doing this type of heart-centered work, it is a personal growth journey and a business growing journey. And you learn how to be a better business person while you also learn how to be a better whatever it is that you do person and you become a better person and you grow as a soul as a result. You can't put time on that. <laughs> but, and every time I've hired a coach, it has sped things up. DIYing something, anything, the more you do, bringing in an expert, the more you learn, the faster you will get to the results that you want. Um, and that's what I see with my clients too. It folds time for them. They're able to do things faster than they would have been able to do on their own. Is that the only reason I hire a coach? No, but it's the best reason I have for this profit argument that I'm trying to make. Um, the other thing that I love about having a coach and I have always had a coach, um, is they can see things that I can't. And even though I'm a coach, I still can only hold a mirror to myself so much, right? Even though I live and breathe mindset stuff, I can still only see what I can see about my own self. And so when I open up and I'm vulnerable with my coach, she can help me with both the mindset piece and the strategic piece of the things that I'm missing, the things that I can't see. That's what I do for my clients. That's what other coaches do for their clients. And again, this isn't about hiring me. This is about hiring a coach. Find somebody that resonates with you, that makes sense for you and get yourself some help. Get yourself the next level, your next level results. Go grab a partner to help you with that. You don't have to do it by yourself. You can bring on an expert, a VA, a web designer, a bookkeeper, a social media expert, a graphics person, a copywriter, a business coach, all of these things are gifts that you give yourself under the category of investment that allow you to get the support you need so that you can grow your business in the way or in the speed at which or closer to the speed at which you want it, right? We all want it tomorrow. We all want to make more money tomorrow. But the truth is, even though these things look on the surface, like, oh my God, I have to spend money. It brings it comes, it comes back sometimes really fast, <laughs> um, but it does absolutely come back. Okay. I'm not seeing any new comments. So I don't know if that's Facebook or if that's you guys just being quiet, taking in what I'm saying. So I'm just going to check one more place and then I'm going to keep going. Um, Technology has been a little funky today. Okay. So number one, how to create more profit in your business. Invest that money that's coming in. Not all of it, but invest some of that money that's coming in into the business again. Um, and I have a couple other things to say about that when I get to number two and number three, but I'm going to stop. So if you have questions as we're going, please ask them. Please give me your reactions. Give me your, what you talking about? Willis's, whatever you're feeling. Lori Smith said she wanted to growl at me and I love that. So, um, and I know that you were kidding, but you kind of weren't and it's good. I, like I said, I knew the first thing that I said was going to be a little growly. Okay. So number one, how to make more profit in your business, invest in your business. Um, again, there are many other ways that you can invest in your business. Um, if you have a product, for example, maybe you're going to invest in a different type of material or a different type of tool or whatever it is, like that's also a great investment. Um, I'm just giving you two examples here. Number two, <sighs> so 
simplify. Simplify what you're doing. I see all the time, this is something that I constantly have to remind myself and I constantly have to remind my clients because so many of us are so fucking determined and committed to what we're doing that we sometimes think that we have to go do it in 19 different places in 19 different ways and have 75 offerings. And for some people that is the way that they do it. But what I find, if you wanna make money faster and you wanna find more peace in your mind and you wanna feel calmer in your day, I find that when you simplify, and I'm gonna talk a few about a few things to simplify. When you simplify and even make a little boring parts of your business, you free up that space that I was talking about a minute ago to go focus on the stuff that you do best, to serve a client, to run a group, to make the jewelry, to make the art, to get it out there, to be the face of your business to go live because you have more energy left in the day to do a live stream on your, for your audience. Um, the simpler you run your business, the better. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a few examples. Number one, simplify your strategy. Simplify your strategy. So many people I know, and this is, it's okay to have multiple offers, but if you have multiple offers, be sure that you're focused on one at a time. Be sure that you're promoting, especially one at a time. Um, number one, it keeps you focused. You know what your social media posts are about. You know what you're talking to people about. You know if you have a special that that's going to be the thing that you discount. Um, it keeps you focused. It keeps you streamlined. It calms the noise of the, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? What about this? Oh, I, I need to do something else because I haven't brought in the money yet. Like I actually find that instead of going into 18 places and running, you know, 90 miles an hour in all 18 places, it's easier to run like 45 miles an hour at one target. And I had a client call last week where we just did this and I'm just going to do this because I feel like it's relevant for everybody. Take all this, whatever this means to you. For me, it means focus my energy, get clear, simplify, and then put that simple focused energy thing out into the world. So get calmer, get more simple, get more focused with what you're putting out. So this is about strategy. I've got a couple other examples. This is about strategy and what you're promoting. And I want to share one example with this because um, I noticed this with me and I think I pretty much approach my stuff pretty simply. I have group programs. I have a group coaching program and I have one-on-ones. That's it. That's it. I have a one-on-one. -on -one, I have a couple of one-on-one -on -one coaching programs, but really I have one. I have one coaching program for the most part with a few variations, but only for certain people. And then I have a group coaching program. I ran Evolve, my group coaching program last fall. So I marketed it. And then when that finished, I was marketing one-on-ones. And then in February, I started to market Evolve again because I was getting ready to run that in March. So I marketed Evolve for six weeks a month. And then as soon as that wrapped up, I moved back to one-on-ones. So over the course of eight months, it was one-on-ones, then group, then one-on-ones, then group, then one-on-ones. Okay, that's five things, right, in a way. I can't tell you how many people said to me, I'm so surprised you're marketing your one-on-ones again. Well, what was I going to do? I just finished marketing Evolve. Like, what? <laughs> I don't have anything else to offer. I have two offers. Right. But even in that seemingly simple, and I will continue to do that, by the way, I think it works. But my point is sometimes people are still going to be confused. And that's okay. And I'm fine with it because I like doing both, but I only do one at a time. 
yes. Did people call me for, hey, I think I want to join the Evolve program and they ended up going into the one-on-one -on -one program instead? Yes. Did people call me last fall and say, hey, I think I want to do one-on-one -on -one coaching and we realized they made more sense for Evolve. So they went into Evolve the next time? Yes. But as far as what I'm putting out there, it was very focused. I'm talking about Evolve. I'm talking about Evolve. I'm talking about Evolve. Evolve. Okay, now I'm talking about one-on-ones. I'm talking about, I've been talking about one-on-ones since the beginning of March and it's mid-April. I'm still talking about one-on-ones because I'm not running Evolve again anytime soon. Anytime soon, I'll run it again. Um, so how funny is that, that even that, I only have two offers and I'm just slowly alternating between them. And I had several people say, oh, wow, you're going to do one-on-one -on -one coaching again. I've always been doing it, right? But it's only about what people see. It's only about what people are listening to. It's only about what you focus on. And so can you imagine if I was trying to run it, both of those at the same time or offer a third or fourth option and keep throwing things? Hey, I do this. Oh, and then next week, did you know I also do this? And then next week, did you also know I do this? Your audience then gets confused. So the simpler you get, the more people understand better what you do because they're not like trying to spend a whole lot of time trying to figure out what you do. They're scrolling and they're half-assed looking at what you've got to say anyway, right? So whatever they're picking up on quickly by skimming, and I commit to that myself, I'm a huge skimmer. Whatever they're picking up when they skim your stuff is what they pick up on, right? So simplify your strategy, which is also, which is also your offers, but also your promotions um, and what you're focused on. Okay, Alice says, I love this. It makes so much sense. Focus on what you want. Focus on what you want to do. I know that's what I've been working on. Yeah, and you've done a great job, Alice, right? And then I think the other thing that I like to tell people is, and this goes with this, and this goes with Alice, like also take the offerings that you do have and make them as simple as you can. Um, I like to offer, especially with Evolve, multiple payment plan options, but I also like to not overwhelm people with like, well, you can take this, but then you can also do this, and then you could also do the VIP add-on, and then you could do this, or you could do it may five months, or you could pay in full, or you could, like, I have a lot of options, but it's, it's important to deliver them in a way that's not overwhelming, because then they can't process all of that, right? Like, it's just too complicated. Um, with my one-on-one -on -one program, it's five months, you pay in full or you pay over five months. Very simple, right? So I think the more that you can simplify, you can always have other options available or like discussion, discussions of pay in full or payment plan and then we can discuss payment plan, right? But not overwhelming your audience, not overwhelming yourself with your options, not feeling like you have to create an option for everyone. That's the big one. Oh, I have this client who wanted X, so maybe I should create X for her. Sometimes maybe, but do you have a lot of clients that want X or just the one client that wants X that didn't want the thing that you offer? And so then maybe you're really afraid of losing them. The simpler you can keep your offers, the better. The simpler you can keep your pricing, the better. The simpler you can keep your strategy and your marketing, the better. Okay, I'm gonna look at my notes because there was something else I wanted to say around simplify. Yeah. And then this is also true if you're hiring, same thing with strategy, but then this sort of come, what I'm talking about mostly is like simplify at a macro level, right? Like simplify your strategy, simplify your offering. Um, and then as you simplify your strategy, if you're focusing on one thing at a time, that also helps you know which experts to hire one at a time or two at a time. Because if you want to create a group program and market it, plus bring on a business coach plus hire a, you know somebody because you don't like your website like that's a whole lot of stuff honestly to do all at once probably you don't need to do all three of those things at one time right so when you simplify your strategy and you choose one thing to focus on at a time it doesn't mean the other things aren't being done right it doesn't mean that because i'm focusing on one-on-one -on -one coaching right now which i by the way adore um that i'm never going to run evolve again but this is my focus right now. And that's there waiting for me when I'm ready. Um, so that also, when you simplify, it also helps you know what experts to bring in. 
because if this is what you're doing, like, for example, if I'm focusing on one-on-one -on -one right now, one of the things I want to do with Evolve is I want to move on to a, um, a better platform because I offer some pre-recorded videos and all of our calls are recorded and I give people some content, you know, like PDF content and notes and things that they can use to support them through the program. It's not just our live coaching calls. Um, and I'd really love to move that to a better platform because my, I'm sort of maxing out with the um, delivery of what I can do on my website. But do you see how that's like very back burner for me right now? Because Evolve is back burner for me right now. I, I, I'm focused on this when I'm ready and I have my deck state for Evolve, then I'll start thinking about bringing somebody on to help me move to a new platform. Right. So, but it's not there. It's not something I'm thinking about anymore. I've just written it down on my back burner list and I've just stuck it there, which one of the things that I've been recommending to my um, clients lately is something that I do that I didn't know other people didn't do. <laughs> Have a back burner list. Something is always on the back burner, you guys. And this is how you simplify sometimes because we have all these brilliant ideas as, as creative people, right? We have all these brilliant ideas of things that we wanna do. And it doesn't mean that just because you pick one thing that the other stuff is never gonna be done. Make a back burner list. And in some ways for me, my back burner list is my knowledge that I'm committing to myself that I will do these things or maybe I one day I won't care anymore and then it's fine. I will do these things when the time is right. I have book ideas. I have a screenplay idea I want to write. Like when something comes into my head, I jot it down on my piece of paper on my little Google doc. And then I move on. I am not writing a book right now. I'm not writing a screenplay right now. I have a coaching program I want to do for coaches. I am not doing that right now. Like all these ideas, I have a huge back burner list. Some of which I probably will never do, but I don't have to decide that right now until the time is right. There's always something on the back burner. Evolve is on the, the next version of my Evolve is on the back burner. I'm focused on my one-on-one -on -one clients right now. So does that mean I'm never gonna run Evolve again, which I had this conversation this morning? No, absolutely not. I'm gonna run it again. But until I decide to run it again, it's just sitting on the back burner waiting for me. And that's okay because I can be focused. That helps me stay focused. That helps me stay committed to this without thinking that I'm letting this go. And it helps me know what I'm putting out there. It keeps my marketing focused. It keeps my strategy, my other strategic decisions focused. Like, okay, I don't need to hire somebody to help me with this platform for Evolve because it's not time for Evolve right now. So that's not an expert I need to worry about. They're on the back burner. And that's something I see a lot of people do who have a lot of income, but not a lot of profit, right? Today's about profit. I see a lot of people who have a bunch of income but aren't really feeling like any of that money is coming into their pockets. It's because they're trying to attack 18 different things at once and they are bringing on experts and they are hiring a team, right? But can you see how that can get unfocused? And then they're not all focused on one or maybe even two things at a time to grow the business and to get this, this foundation of the next level of income. And then once that's running, Great, then you can build an ad to it. Great, then you can build an ad to it. Great, then you can build an ad to it. But this is all, this can all still run the way that it runs. I hope that makes sense. Simplify, maybe I'm discussing simplify in a complicated way, but um, simplifying is the other thing. The second thing that I like to say will help you to create more profit in your business because the more disparate your energy is, the more disparate your focus is in multiple places, the longer each one of those avenues is going to take to get you to the final, the final, wherever you want to go, your goal, your financial goals, let's just say. Um, Alice, lesson says makes total sense. Alice, I love that you guys are commenting next to each other. Alice says, oh my God, make package was huge. Yes, right? Okay, my internet is unstable. I'm just going to hold tight for a second. Um, right, Alice? Because Alice had all these different things that she was offering and we just moved them all into one package so that people didn't have to choose what they got. They just got it all. Um, and that helps Alice focus and be able to communicate to her clients what it is that she offers in a simpler, easier way. Hey, this is what I do. This is what you get. Want it or not? Here's my price. 
right? It's simple. Okay, um, so number one, profit, creating action, invest in your business. Number two, simplify. Simplify at a macro level. Simplify your strategy. Simplify who you're bringing on. Simplify what you're focused on marketing at a time. It's not only helpful for your clients, but it clear, and then get yourself a back burner list. It helps to clear the mind of like, oh my God, am I going to do this? Or am I going to do this? Okay, but I'm going to start to do this. But now I worry that I'm supposed to have an online course because everybody tells me that the best way to grow my business is to have an online course. And so I need to, you know, uh, focus on one-on-ones, but also I have to build this online course. Do you see the energy? And I'm like being a little dramatic, but do you see the energy in it? We've all been there, right? You're running at different strategies. And the truth is you only really need one strategy at a time. Pick the one that makes the most sense for you and run at it and focus all your energy and all your experts and all your support and all your everything on it until you've gotten it where you want it to go. And then when it feels like it's a well-oiled machine and you have more space, then you can decide if you wanna keep that going while adding something else. Totally different energy to that. And then again, as I said, within the investment section, when you can run your business with a calmer approach, Clearing your mind, not to say that you're never going to have stuff come up. This is why you hire coaches, right? This is, I always like, every time something comes up, I just add it to my list to talk to my coach about. And then I know it's going to be covered. <laughs> and then I can let it go for a minute, get back to what I'm doing. Um, so it doesn't mean that things aren't going to come up. The simpler you can get in your brain with your strategy, with what you're doing, and then just commit to that, then you open up more time more importantly, you open up and you open up more energy, right? And as I talked about in the investment section, when you're spending your actual energy levels on something, it's very inefficient when it's not just focused and you're putting it out there or when it's, oh, I'm going to try to do this task because I don't want to hire somebody to do it. But now I'm spending all my energy on that. And I never made it to that networking meeting yesterday. The things that you need to be doing, the things that you should be doing that only you can do are the money generating activities around marketing and advertising that only you can do and the money generating activities that only you can do to serve your clients or create your product. Those are the two most important things you can be doing. And frankly, then you add in your levels of fulfillment. How, do you really want to be doing your bookkeeping? Some people do. I do my own bookkeeping. I like it. Do you really want to be doing your own social media marketing? Do you really want to be doing your own copywriting? Whatever it is that's pulling you down, get yourself back into your zone of genius. It will also make you more fulfilled. And when you're more fulfilled, you're also more magnetic because when you're living in your zone of genius, more spending more hours in your day in your zone of genius, whatever it is that you're creating, service or product, and you're like vibrating your genius energy and people just want that shit, right? It just makes, it just adds to everything. So this is why investing and focusing, I mean, investing and simplifying help you focus. And then on the other end of that is magnetism. Okay, number three, something that I used to hate discussing that now I kind of geek out about is time management. Number three is time management. And this is kind of the same idea as we talked about simplifying on the strategic level. Now we're gonna simplify on more of a micro level. So first off, time management, if you do number one and number two and the ways that make sense for your business at the stage it's in right now, at the amount of money it's making right now, at with what makes sense for your business model. If you do number one and invest and you do number two and you simplify, then already you've enhanced your time management, right? But if you also do one thing at a time at a micro level, organize your calendar a little bit better. Get yourself to a point where your time is managed efficiently so that and this is something I have, I swear to God, I have this conversation almost every single day with my clients so that you can get out of super busy energy, uh, feeling behind energy, um, survival energy. 
And I do this too. This is something that I have to consistently work on. Um, for most people, but not all, this happens around all the things that are not client facing, right? Especially if you're in a service oriented business. So some people say, well, I'm not, I'm not too busy. I don't even have enough clients. My, you know, my book, my book of clients isn't even full. Okay, but how are you spending your time? And if you're spending all your time working on your social media, because it's really, really hard for you and you have a lot of blocks around it, then you're not energetically open to receive the next level of clients because you're so busy, because you're behind, because you're in survival mode, because you're like, shit, I got to catch up on this, right? The super, super busy energy is not attracting clients. It's this like secret hidden vibe behind your business that when you are behind, and I see this in my business all the time, when I'm behind, nobody comes, nobody comes in. And the minute, I swear you guys, the minute I catch up or just decide that I catch up, you know what, next week, I'm not going to post as much on social media so that I can catch up. Oh, look, now I'm on track again. I'm the owner of this business. I can make that decision anytime I want to post every day. I like to post every day, I like that consistency. I can do that now because I have somebody helping me with my social media, but there are weeks where you won't see me post every day. And it's my ability. It's one of the ways that I help myself to feel caught up. So then I just decide that I'm caught up. There's a lot of little hacks like that, right? And then I have caught up energy and then I have, I'm on track energy and my business is running smoothly energy. And then guess what? I start to get phone calls again. It's like nine times out of 10, I could track my time management and the way that I feel doing my business with how much is coming in. When I'm behind, I don't make as much, I don't make any or much sales. When I'm on track, it just won't stop coming in. And so much of that's up here. So much of that's up here. You're the owner of this business. You get to decide. Like, yeah, you got to file your taxes by a certain time, right? Yeah, you got to do certain things by a certain time. But for the most part, you set your own, you create your own reality. <laughs> oh my God, I haven't posted every day this week. I'm so behind. Are you really? Or did you just create something that you can't keep up with? So you need to change that schedule until you can. There's no judgment. You don't have to post every day as an example. That's one of my favorite things to, to, to hack. Or I'll go grab some posts from three months ago and repost them. And then look, look at that, next week is scheduled. <laughs> I don't have to create brand new content every week, right? When you manage your time and when you get out of the energy of feeling of, and what are you saying to yourself, right? Are you saying that you're behind? I do that all the time. Oh, I gotta catch up. Oh my God, decide that you're caught up take something off your list, move it to the back burner, move it to next week's list. I'm notorious for deciding that I can do all these things in one week. I'm way too optimistic with how much time. I have no concept of really how long it takes me to do stuff. None, never have. Don't plan on learning that anytime soon. But what I do know about myself is that now. So I try to make a list of things for each week that I think I can, I can totally knock that out of the park and then do next week's shit. And when I create a list for myself like that, oftentimes it's only just what gets done that week. But I, then, then I have a totally different mindset around it. And I tell myself, look how, I tell Amy all the time, look how ahead we are. I'd love to just talk about how ahead I am, how, how up, caught up I am, right? I made that out up myself. I decide what's ahead and what's behind. So I'm kind of playing a stupid game with myself, but it freaking works. <laughs> it works. Now, I also have clients who have uh, volumes of work coming in and they literally are drowning in their work. And that is the other level of time management, right? But even that, you get to set expectations with your clients about when certain things are getting done. But the better you focus your time management, which is also about simplifying at the micro level, then can you see how that translates to better profit? Okay, it's the energy thing that I talked about where you can become more magnetic when you kind of just have everything organized and in flow and it just works. But then you also have to think about all the other things that we've talked about today. When you have your calendar in order and you have good time management with your time, 
that energy that we were talking about. If you're spending a lot of energy each week, figuring out how you're going to manage your time, reshuffling your calendar around, redoing your to-do list, or when you have an extra hour, sometimes I'll have 30 minutes to an hour in between client calls. If I don't already know what I'm going to do during that hour, then it'll take me at least 15 minutes out of that hour just to figure out what I should be working on. So plan that all in advance. And then you hop on your call. Oh, I've got an hour. Great. What was I, what did I say I was going to do during that hour? Great. I'll start working on this. And then I just go. So the better you are at time management, you're more energetically attractive, but you're also energy, your energy is being spent more efficiently, which also calms that quiet, calms the quiet, calms that chaotic mind and enables you to focus on one thing at a time. And when you can focus on one thing at a time, it's strate- it's practical, it's time and it's efficiency, but then it's also energetically more attractive. And then again, running a heart-centered business isn't all about making money. It's also about fulfillment. And you will not be fulfilled if you spend all of your days doing the work or a big chunk of your days doing the work that you don't enjoy around your business. You will not be fulfilled if you spend all of your days not finding the best clients to, to serve that will bring you fulfillment. Or if you're creating something, right? If you're a creative, like creating whatever your art is, if you don't have enough time in your studio or equivalent to create the thing that you sell, then you're missing the money, the income piece, but you're also missing the fulfillment because you're doing your bookkeeping and your social media, which you don't like. Those are the two that I think most people don't like. Not to say that that needs to be the thing you delegate, but whatever it is that you don't like or whatever it is that you're not good at. And then you're shortchanging your studio time, your creative time. Again, what are the things that you and only you can be doing and should be doing? It's whatever your genius is, your service or your product, making that happen. For me, it's one-on-one client calls or running my group. And then whatever it is that you do from an advertising and marketing space standpoint to be the face of your business, whether it's going to like doing this live stream for me is something that only I can do, right? Um, Going to a networking meeting is something only I can do. Setting my strategic um, key points for my social media strategy, something only I can do. And then Amy can help me execute it, but only I can decide what I'm promoting and like what my strategy is around that right? Okay. So I'm going to check these for comments. Um, but there are so many other things that you can do to create profit in your business. These are just the three that I see time and again. And I also think, honestly, these are the three that are actually really easy to implement. Maybe you don't need to implement all three. Maybe you just need to implement one at a time because you're going to follow number two and be simple. (laughs) Simplify. Um, but these are things that I don't care what level of income you're at, how long you've been in business. There's always some, there's something on this list that I've discussed that you can execute and take action on now. I guarantee you there's something in here that you can take action on now, even if it's just reshuffling your calendar to be more efficient. Okay. Um, I wish you more profit. I wish you more success. Uh, I don't have my calendar with me. Um, Let me see. I think next week is the reading. Let me just double check. Okay. So every Wednesday I do these um, trainings, if you will, long live streams. Um, If you have a topic that you'd like me to cover, please let me know. Send me a private message, comment here in the comments. If you are catching the replay, please ask any questions that you have. I'll come back in here and provide coaching. Next week is a special, um, a special Wednesday live. I only do it once a month. I will be doing an intuitive reading. I'm an intuitive. So bring your questions about your business. Everybody bring one question about your business that you want help with. And I will channel some intuitive guidance for you to help you get unstuck, to help you look at it differently, to help you figure out what you can do next, um, to, grow, scale your business, find fulfillment, enjoy what you're doing, make more money, um, release the crap that you don't enjoy, whatever it is that you want to do in your business. So come next week, bring your questions. Um, 
And one other thing, I am um, still offering free sessions. I don't know how long I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna do it until I'm guided to stop. Um, so if you have a question about your business or something that you'd like some coaching on, I'm offering one free coaching session. Um, so take me up, I'll put the link here in the comments. Take me up on that. It is not a sales call. Um, of course, if you want to talk about working together, that's absolutely something that we can discuss. But the purpose of this call is not to discuss working together. The purpose of this call is to give you free coaching. It's just to give you free coaching. So take me up on this, whether it's something strategic that you need help with. Maybe you need help with your time management and your calendar. Maybe you need help with bringing on more clients. Maybe you need help with finding more you know, deep fulfillment. Maybe you've got a mindset block whatever it is, um, I'm here for you. And I'm having a freaking blast. I am having such a blast doing these sessions. I love, love, love them. So please take me up on it. Come and get some free coaching and it'd be fun just to connect with you. That's the other thing that I'm loving is I'm really getting a chance to connect with people in this group um, that I haven't officially met yet or haven't been able to meet Zoom to Zoom. So Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a lovely week and come see me next week for the live reading. Talk soon.